Hi guys, welcome back. I'm a little under the weather today, but I'm still doing a video for you guys. And happy Corpus Christi to everybody in Trinidad. You're lucky you have a holiday. So anyways, I'm telling you, Trini people not made for this New York weather. It was like 50 something degrees one day and then the next day it was 90 something degrees. So that's what's messing everybody up. This weather is just bipolar. But anyways, so I'm gonna do a tuna puff recipe for y'all today. And tuna puffs are actually one of the most famous out of chicken or cheese. And my subscriber actually brought that to my attention and she's absolutely right. Because if you go to an event, you would most likely see tuna puffs as opposed to cheese or chicken. And this is so popular at weddings and events and just regular lines or get-togethers at your house. It's a really nice and flavorful appetizer that you can serve to your guests. You can serve it at your children's birthday party. And it's so small and cute and nice and just easy to pop one in your mouth. And this recipe is actually a French recipe that they use to make sweet desserts. It's called patachou. But in Trinidad, we use it to make savory appetizers. So if you guys want to see how I do this really flavorful tuna puff recipe, then keep watching. So these are all the ingredients we'll need for the puff part of the tuna puffs. We'll do the filling after. And this recipe is going to make about 25 to 30 puffs. So if you want to double or triple it, then all the exact ingredients are going to be on the screen. Or if you're using your mobile device, just go in the down bar below to find everything you'll need. So I'm starting off first with some flour. You'll need some water, a little pinch of sugar and a pinch of salt, five eggs, four for the puff and one for the egg wash, some butter, and you'll need a piping tube or a piping bag or you can use a Ziploc bag as well to pipe the puffs onto your tray and also to fill the puffs. And I just have a regular flour tip here I guess, but you can use a regular round tip if you want. And if you're using a Ziploc bag, that's totally fine, you can just cut the edge off and just pipe your puffs onto your tray. So now let's go over to the stove to start making the puffs. So my pot is on medium high heat and I've just added my cup of water in there and it's come up to a nice boil. So what we're going to do is just add the butter in. And you also want to add your salt and sugar and just stir it until all the butter melts into the water. So once all those tiny pieces of butter melted, you want to go ahead and add your flour in. And you're just going to stir this into the butter and water and you want it to come together into a nice big clump and kind of pull together. So just keep stirring it so you don't get any lumps. So once it's pulled together and it's formed that nice skin at the bottom, I don't know if you can see that, it'll form like a nice clear skin. Then you want to turn it off. And now transfer it back to a bowl and you're going to let it cool for about 15 minutes because we want to add the egg to this when it's nice and cool. You don't want to add the eggs when it's too hot because then the eggs are just going to scramble in there and cook. So just let this sit and then we'll work on the filling. So this is what you'll need for the tuna filling now. And I have two cans of this tuna and it's soaked in water. I don't like the one soaked in oil. So you can use whatever tuna you want to use. And you'll need hot pepper chopped finely, lemon juice, some mayonnaise or in Trinidad we call this mayonnaise some pimento peppers. This is what pimento pepper looks like and it's very flavorful but it has a little bit of heat to it. Not like the regular Trinidad hot pepper. This just has a mild kick to it. So I just chopped it up finely. I have some shadow benny chopped, some saiba scallion chopped, celery leaf chopped finely, red onion chopped very finely as well. You can use white onion if you want, some regular salt and some black pepper. So now let's start putting the tuna filling together. So I've drained the water out of the tuna and I just added it to my little bowl here. And the first thing we're gonna add is just a little tiny pinch of salt. Don't add too much because we can taste it at the end and see if it needs any more. Now add some black pepper. You know I like to use freshly ground black pepper. Now you just want to give it a little squirt of lemon juice. This is just to cut the freshness. Make sure you don't get the seeds in there because you really don't want to bite a lemon seed. Now just add the rest of your ingredients. So 
So I'm just gonna kind of mash the tuna because it's in big chunks and I want it to be sort of like a paste. Okay, now we're gonna add the mayo. I'm just gonna add about a quarter cup of mayo or less. So once this is all mixed and all those ingredients are incorporated, taste it to see if it needs any salt or pepper or anything else and just set it aside and now we're gonna start working on the puffs. So the dough has gotten really nice and cool now and we're gonna start folding our eggs in. And what you wanna do is crack your egg into there and if you're using organic eggs then crack it in a separate bowl and then add it. And what you're gonna do is just fold this into your flour mixture and only when this is incorporated into the dough then add the other egg. And just continue doing that until you've finished using the four eggs. So I just added the fourth egg and I'm just gonna fold that in. And the dough is gonna start to become very heavy. So your end result is going to be a very dense dough and when you pull it up it's going to form a peak. So it's going to hold its shape when you pull it up. I don't know if you can see that. So now all there's left to do is to pipe our puffs onto a tray and put them to bake. So let's go ahead and do that. So to my baking tray I just put some parchment paper, you can put some wax paper as well. But if you're going to pipe it directly onto a tray then you'll have to butter it or spray it with some non-stick spray. So I added about half of the puff mixture into my piping tube because all couldn't fit. And as I told you before I have this little flower tip here and if you're using a ziplock bag then just cut the corner to how big you want it. You can even use a spoon to spoon these onto your tray as well. So I'm going to go ahead and start piping these and you just want to leave a little bit of space between each so that it's going to have space to cook evenly. When you pipe it out, make sure that there's no peak at the top because the peak, if there's a thin peak, it's gonna burn. So I finished piping them and I piped them a little bit bigger than I usually do. So I only got 12 and I have enough for maybe about 3 or 4 more. So I'll do those in a separate pan. So before you put these in the oven, make sure that you preheat your oven at 425 degrees Fahrenheit. You can do that while you're piping these out. And before we put it in the oven, I'm gonna do my egg wash. And this is just one egg and a little bit of water. So you're just gonna burn brush each puff with some egg wash and this is what's gonna give it the really nice brown color and it's gonna look really nice and shiny so as soon as your oven comes up to temperature and it's at 425 degrees Fahrenheit set your timer to 10 minutes and as soon as the 10 minutes is up, we're gonna change the temperature. So the 10 minutes is up, now you're gonna put your oven to 350 degrees and you're gonna let it bake for about 20 to 30 minutes. So my puffs just came out the oven, I left it for 30 minutes at 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Because my puffs were so big, that's why I left it so long. But if you're doing mini puffs, like really small, then just leave it for 20 minutes and you should be fine. So what we're gonna do now is take a skewer or a toothpick and you're gonna just poke a hole in each one of the puffs. Because you wanna let the steam out. So once you poke the holes in them to let the steam out, just leave it to sit for about 10 minutes until it's not so hot and then we can fill them. And I already went ahead and filled my piping tube with the tuna filling. So as soon as this cools down, we'll fill the puffs. And these are the extra four puffs that I baked in a separate tray. And I actually used a Ziploc bag to show you guys how it looks. See, it looks really nice as well. So you can do it in a Ziploc bag if you want. So the puffs have been cooling for a while and I was being a little bit licorice and I had one and I was trying to fill the tuna filling and it made a mess because the tuna chunks were too big so I actually took it out and I put it in the food processor and let it form a nice thin paste and then I put it back in here. So that was just a quick tip to give you guys so maybe before you add all the ingredients then put maybe before you add the ingredients put the tuna in the food processor just so it kind of breaks down and then you can add the rest of the ingredients. So what we're gonna do now is you're gonna take your puff and make a little X at the bottom because that's where we're gonna fill it. It's gonna be easy for you to just put the little tip in there and fill it up. 
and it's so nice and hollow on the inside I'm sticking the knife in there and it's just hollow it's like really hollow when it's hollow you know you have the perfect puff what you can do as well is you can cut it in half and put the filling like that if you want I find it's much neater when you fill it from the bottom I like it that way and then I find that you can put more filling in it when you fill it inside when you cut it open it kind of gets messy and it falls out sometimes so once you've made your X's underneath, we're going to go ahead and start filling them. So you're just going to take your tip, place it inside of the puff, and just fill until you fill enough. And you'll feel like pressure against your finger here when it's filling up. And that's it. So I'm going to finish up the rest and I'll open one and show you how it looks on the inside. And I honestly think the ones that I did with the Ziploc, I think they turned out much nicer than these. Because for some reason, my wrists were paining when I was piping these out. So I just finished filling all the puffs and I must say that it tastes and smells heavenly. So you guys have to try this recipe out. And I'm going to break one and show you guys what it looks like. Do you see how nice and filled it is? It's like filled all the way throughout. So I hope you guys enjoyed this tuna puff recipe. This is such a popular appetizer at parties and limes. You should make it at your next event. It'll be a hit. So thank you so much for watching this video. And if you like it, give the video a thumbs up. If you have any comments, leave them below. And if you haven't subscribed, subscribe to see all my latest videos. And I will see you guys in my next one. Bye.